series circuits have three unique characteristics. The first characteristic is that the voltage will be the additive of all three, four, five, or however many components are in a straight line with one another. The current that flows in a series circuit will always be the same no matter where it is at in the circuit. And in the following and the last case, the resistance will always add to the total. We're going to combine those three main ingredients and get us to a power. So let's look at what happens. I'm going to draw a circuit real quick. I've got a power supply over here. I am going to add a resistor, a resistor, and a resistor. There are three resistors in the circuit. As current flows, we will say that current leaves the minus post, leaves the minus post, and is following a track around this. And it wants to complete the circuit back to the positive side. So that's what will happen with the electrons in the circuit in the elective mode of fourth. And so now let's add some numbers. Let's make this an easy circuit for us. And I will do two four and six ohms and again this is just a quick video to go over series circuits just to give you a mental picture for what we're doing and to make our lives easier let's just say we've got a car battery that's 12 volts so in order for this circuit to work I have to use all 12 volts so that means you start with 12 volts I need to lose some voltage through or be consumed or push I guess is the best word to tell you as we're doing this to push that current through a 2 ohm resistor and then we got to use some voltage to push that current through the 4 ohm resistor and then we had to have some current go through and push through that 6 ohm now this is sort of like the Goldilocks as that electron leaves as current flows and we have this electromagnetic field what we're going to see is the vast majority of our electricity is going to go through the 6 ohm then the second most push and the voltage consumed will be through the 4 ohm and the least amount will be through the 2 so let's look at the total resistance if they add up in our case the resistance total is R1 plus R2 and if you see some mathematical stuff in your future you might see some dots dot dot that tells you it's just the additive so we have a total of 4 plus 6 plus 2 so we have a total of 12 ohms so 12 ohms is our total resistance our voltage total is 12 volts and that means that the current has to remain the same so I take 12 volts divided by 12 ohms and in this very primitive and simple circuit I get 1 amp that means I have 1 amp of current and if I were to break the circuit and insert an ammeter, I would have one amp of flow leaving the battery, and I'd have one amp of flow returning. There is my current flow. And now, if I take and try to find the voltages, this becomes very easy. I will start at the 6 side first, the 6 ohms. In order to find the voltage, it is I times R. So that is 6 ohms multiplied by 1 amp, to get 6 volts. I will have to push 1 amp of current through that 4 ohm resistor. So I times R, which is called your IR drop, means that the 4 ohm resistor has to see 4 volts. And then finally the 2 ohm resistor will have to see 1 amp of flow through it. But because the resistance is low, 2 ohms times 1 amp is 2 volts. And so if I were to do my math, and I look at what I have, 12 volts minus 2 minus 4 and minus 6, I have used all of the voltage in order to get 1 amp of current to flow through the circuit. So series circuits are predominantly used in situations where I need to limit the current. And because the current is the same, because there's only one pathway. And because there's one pathway, we can very easily see that all the voltages that add up the IR drops have to equal to zero. The big picture items you want to walk away from are series circuit equals the resistors add, the currents are the same, and the voltages add. 
and we'll talk about power here in a, just a little bit.